Hi and welcome to another of the DTA screencast and today we're going to be looking at the cardiovascular diseases. This is the single largest cause of death in the western world and is most likely to occur when someone's actually taking part in a sedentary lifestyle. And there are four diseases that we're required to know and we're going to look at each one of those very briefly uh, but hopefully in enough detail to give you a good idea. So the first one that we're talking about is arteriosclerosis and this is related to uh, reduction in the elasticity or thickening or hardening of the arteries which actually reduces uh, our ability to supply O2 to the relevant muscles. So how that would potentially look on this diagram here is this hardening aspect here reduces the amount of or ability of flow for the blood through the arteries. One of the knock-on effects of this is a reduction in the vasoconstriction and vasodilation because you think about something that's quite supple that's able to constrict and dilate because of the elasticity of something, for example a balloon, compare that to a hard plastic pipe, it's not actually going to be, constrict, uh, be able to constrict and dilate. So as the blood passes through there is a, a greater force applied against the blood as it's moving through. One well, of the other things that can actually occur is a potential blockage. Uh, if you get a blood clot here, then that can also have a serious impact. And as we've just highlighted here, smoking actually accelerates the natural hardening process of the arteries. So if you start smoking younger, the process will start earlier, and blood clots are two to four times more likely to occur. So if we have a look at a normal artery, someone who's got mild arteriosclerosis and here uh, severe. So this large increase in the hardening of the arteries, therefore a reduction in the diameter. Now atherosclerosis is actually a form of arteriosclerosis and this involves a changing of the lining of the arteries. So this is usually formed by high levels of cholesterol and fat deposits building up on the inside of the artery walls. In turn what this will do is ha have a narrowing effect on the artery and therefore an increase in the amount of blood clots or the potential for blood clots. Clearly as the blood tries to pass through a narrower space if you have a blood clot then uh, this is potentially where it's going to be. What this, uh, the knock-on effect of that is, is an increase in our blood pressure and also a reduction in the blood flow, therefore a reduction in the O2 uh, being carried to the working muscles. This increase in blood pressure, as we know, is called hypertension and can have significant knock-on effects. So the third of our diseases is angina and this is commonly uh, a symptom is usually chest pains, um, a clutching of the chest there and uh, the reason for this is there's a partial blockage to the blood that's actually feeding our heart walls and as I mentioned before it can cause quite severe chest pain. Now this is usually atherosclerosis or arteriosclerosis that causes the narrowing of the arteries that are leading to the heart walls therefore reducing the amount of O2. So these two are very important to remember when we're actually talking about angina. Uh, this can occur during rest, uh, when someone's anxious, or during physical exercise. So this is obviously when the heart requires more O2, and because of the reduction, in the narrowing of that artery, the supply is restricted, and therefore we incur the pain. So the last of the diseases we're looking at is the heart attack. Now the heart attack is a more severe or sudden or total restriction in the O2 that's flowing to the heart walls. So I'm sure you can imagine what happens if you restrict the amount of uh, blood that's going to a working muscle. It's not going to be able to work. So here we have uh, a graphic of a blood clot. This has travelled down the coronary artery 
and it's come up to a narrower part that has buildup of calcium or fatty deposits, so arterial or atherosclerosis has occurred. And that in turn is reducing or stopping the blood flow to the heart wall. So if we look back at each one of the four diseases, you can see how they're interlinked. We've got arteriosclerosis and atherosclerosis are the two formations that narrow and reduce the effectiveness of our arteries. We have the warning signals, which are potentially angina, which is the partial blockage of a coronary artery. And then lastly, we have our heart attack, which is the complete blockage and complete stop of blood and O2 going to the working muscle, which in this turn is the heart. Okay. So what we'll look at in the next session is how do we actually reduce these risks and hopefully prevent coronary heart diseases. Thanks very much.